Hey everyone, it is Natalie from Being Intentionally Creative and you will notice that I have a couple of Amazon packages here in front of me. I guess I should move some stuff out of the way. I am I am going to do a double, what do you want to call this? A double test, if you will, with what's in these two packages. It just, you know, so happens. I don't know if you're like me, but you get on Amazon, you start scrolling through things, and you're looking for one thing, and then all of a sudden something else pops up, and you go, ooh, we got to try that. So these are from two different companies, but I thought because of what they were, they would work well together. So we're going to test them both out. So you're probably saying, okay, get on with it. What are these things you have ordered? So I'm just going to open this up, and I'm going to show you what I have. And I've come to the conclusion I need a bigger table than what I've got here. Just because I do. Okay, so the first thing is from Let's Resin. And the second thing is from a company here in Canada. And I don't know how long they've had this product on the market, but it caught my attention. I thought, I want to try it out very nondescript kind of box, right? <laughs> okay, let's open up the box first. And hopefully it is <laughs> it is what I think it is, which would be really nice. All right, so what have we got in the box? Bit of a surprise. Well, they're, they're gloves. And there's a lid. There's a UV lamp. There is a silicone mat. That's the, makes some noise. Throw that off to the side. A couple of little silicone dishes. A couple of little silicone sticks. I. I wish they these were more solid in the center. That would make, I think, using them easier. But uh, what's interesting is on this one, it looks like a pen, if you will, on the one end, which is kind of cool. This is a scoop on this end, and then these two are just the let's shove things into place. I guess if you want to call it that. So what's the magic thing that's in this? This is a UV resin by Magic Resin. Now, I, as I say, I don't know how long Magic Resin has had out a UV resin. You know from most of my videos that I do use the two-part epoxy by Magic Resin, and I really like it. I've liked it for a long time. It has always worked well for me. The one thing I will mention, and I've said it before in my other videos, is the fact that for me, anyways, being where I live in Canada, being that it is starting and has gotten rather cold here, and when I say rather cold, anything under minus uh, one is cold. Granted, we can get up to, with wind chills up here, minus 36, minus 40, below zero. Anyways, I have to warm my products up now just so that I don't get massive air bubbles in them. So this is rather cold. I just got it today. Anyway, I wanted to try it out. I've used Let's Resin. I've used J Diction. I really like them. There's some other brands I'm not fussy on. I wanted to put this one to the test. So I thought they had the package deal and that was kind of cool because I thought, well, for the price, it was worth it to me. We'll try out their UV lamp. We'll see, you know, how it compares. The big thing is the UV resin. How is it going to compare to and I, I will say J Diction and Let's Resin because I know their their brand is really good. So let's get their lamp out. You uh, USB cord. I'm just going to open it up now. It's been interesting because with some products, people are complaining that the the USB cord is not very long. I'd say this is this is a good length. I mean, that's can you? See, uh, this is double. So, you know, that's that's fairly long, which is really nice. And it is a UV lamp, so, you know, having a fairly decent cord is great. Now, what I've gotten into doing with cords, because I'm famous for doing this, 
With the electronics being the way they are today, I'm going to give you a tip on these cords. Put a tag on them so you know what cords go with what units. Sometimes if you plug the wrong cord into the wrong, you know, apparatus like this, they won't work together. And if you're anything like me, you have a box of cords and going, I don't know what these go with anymore. And I do have a box of cords and I do need to figure out what they're going with. But so that's my trick now is to put on it and say, okay, this is the cord for the magic resin UV light. I don't know if you're doing it, but if you're not and you have all kinds of cords and you think that's a good idea, then please, by all means, use it. All right, let's get into this and have a look-see at it. Now, this is something like one of the first UV lamps I got. It's not overly big. It's got quite a few lights in it. Now, there's no instructions or anything with this, so I don't know. Okay, so we do have three settings. We have a 60, we have a 90, and we have a 150 second on this. So that's kind of cool. It's a nice green light. So let's just see. I, the gloves, I am just going to toss them. They're going to go into another room. I have all kinds of these now, so I'm just going to put them up on where they belong. This mat doesn't look overly big, but that's okay. I'll just put it off to the side too because I've got a number of them. And these guys can go in that container. So, boy, that cleared off my space really well. So let's plug it in. Wrong end. That. Yeah. Push this off to the side. All right. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. It's still in. All right. So it lights up a little bit. Let me turn this light off. These light up, which is nice. And if I kind of cover, you can kind of see it on. So there, 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 and off. So nothing really fancy there, but I do like the green lights. I know on my Let's Resin one, uh, we have the two, the five, and no, the two, three, and five minute. It's hard to see the lights because they're coming through the blue. So I, I do like that. It's very clear to me what uh, length of time it's going to be on for. So we're going to give that a go. We're going to have to let that warm up, at least get it to room temperature. So what does this say? One of the things I was very curious about was whether or not this would be uh, yellow resistant. They say fast curing, no mixing, low odor, and crystal clear. And it did say, if I'm not mistaken, in the write-up on Amazon that it was non-yellowing as well. And I would think by this point in time, that most companies would have figured out how to do the non-yellowing when it comes to uh, UV resin. I know in the past, and I'm going back probably two, three years ago, that that wasn't one of their top priorities, but it definitely, uh, as I've been noticing, has become one of them. So that's really cool. Ah. Apologizing for the sniffling. What did I get from Let's Resin? So if you had to guess, based on the shape of this box. What do you think's in here? I'll give you a second, put it in the comments below. Let's see if you're ready and to try out their resin tape. I did look for J Diction online on amazon.ca, could not find it. And I'm trying to think, did I find it on amazon.com? I'm not even sure I saw it there. Not even sure I saw it there, but I did want to try this out as well. And the big, I think the big reason is because they see it's high temperature resistance. And that's very curious to me. I, I gotta be careful with it. Obviously I don't want to, you know, do anything really wild and crazy with it, but the high temperature is kind of cool. Let me get my scissors down again for this. I like that it's the two inches. The other really big thing I like that they're now advertising about with these things are, or is the fact that these are supposed to be non-sticky when you take them off. I have some, 
again, we're going back to when the tapes first came out and they are sticky and they do leave a residue behind. So I'm really excited to see what this actually does. Will it leave any kind of residue behind on it? So this is going to be a really cool test for us to do. Two different companies, two different products, just to see uh, how well they work. So I'm going to get myself organized now that I've talked your ear off for a little bit. Definitely going to let my resin warm up because it should uh, it should be warmer. And I'm just reading the back, so just if you wondered what you know was kind of going, what she's saying, what she's thinking, blah blah blah. Okay, so the instructions are in this: optimal for pores up to 1.5 centimeters thick. For best results, expose both sides to UV light for two to three minutes each. Use a clear silicone mold as UV light penetrates it effectively. So we are going to see how this, how this actually works. And it's a nice big ball. This is 250 mils. So it is comparable in size to the Lutz resin. And we are going to see how well this works and how well this works. Let me get all set up and we will carry on. And I'm kind of hoping to do a Christmas theme with this because I really, 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 really want to see how well I can do on doing Christmas theme stuff up until Christmas. Be back in a bit. It definitely looks like the world blew up on my desk here, but that's okay. We're not going to keep everything here because I will never be able to work properly if I leave everything that's here. I want to try a few different things when we're testing out the Let's Resin Tape and the Magic Resin UV Resin. So uh, there are a few things I want to try and we'll see what happens. Before I carry on with that, my last video where we did the sleigh, I have a very good friend who unfortunately lives quite a ways away from me, but we do communicate quite a bit. I show her most of the art pieces that I create. And I showed her this and she wondered about putting presents on the inside of this. If you have, I have one of my molds that's just squares. A couple of years ago, I made a piece that had a base, a Christmas tree, and then these little squares that I decorated up as presents. You could do something like that in here, maybe putting something in the base of it so that you didn't have to put so many of the squares in, depending on the size of them. Recently, Michaels has some Christmas silicone molds out and I've picked some of those up and we'll probably be working with them. But there's another idea for this. If you were to put something in the bottom, uh, just to sort of as a filler and then just sort of dotted Christmas presents within there, that might be kind of cool. Just sharing that with you in case you have that mold and you wanted another idea, because why not? more ideas, the better. Right. What are we going to do here? So let me put my tape off to the side. Get my brushes out of the way. I want to get some stuff cleaned up because I definitely need to. What have I pulled out? Well, a selection of different things. One of the things we are going to do is this was the second Christmas house I had done. I want to fill in some of these squares, which reminds me I have to go get my yellow UV resin because we're going to use yellow UV resin on these and we're going to test that out doing that with the Let's Resin. So that's one of the things we're going to do with this just to see how it sticks and then tearing it off. And I thought, oh, well, this would be the side I taped down, which is a disaster in and of itself. As I say, when you're working with polyurethane, I think it's better to have things that aren't so intricate because you don't have the time to get in and around everything. This is the side we're going to put the tape on. Then we're going to flip it over and we're going to pour the UV resin in. So I'll have to grab that at some point. So I'm just going to throw that off to the side for a moment. What else do I want to do? I have a couple of little um, pieces I've made quite a while ago. This one I used one of the Ranger products on. So we're just going to tape this up around the side and we're going to dome it. Now, I will admit using this to dome something like this is, this is an extreme. I'm not sure how well that's going to work for me. We'll see what we can do. I may have to cut it down uh, to use it, but they talked about the ability to dome 
And one of the things that they mentioned in the video, which I found really unique, and I unfortunately really don't have the proper silicone piece to do it with, but if I use this as an example, so they had a piece, they had a silicone mold that the person was doing like a seascape in it. But when it was done, it was going to be like this. They had a square, but they actually wrapped the Let's Resin tape on the silicone mold, or at least that's the way it looks to me. And I've never really found a good tape that will stick to silicone. And then they poured their resin, and then once it was cured, then they put it back down and finished off with their piece. So I thought, I want to see how well, and I guess I could, you know, even try it on this, how well the Let's Resin will stick to silicone. Uh, because I've always found the only thing that really sticks to silicone is silicone. So maybe we'll, we'll test that out on there. I don't, I don't want to make the video too long, but I want to go through different things. So the idea is to tape these two pieces up. I want to dome the back of this one. And this piece, I'm pretty confident, I mean, I made this a long time ago, but I'm pretty sure I used UV resin in it. All right, what else are we going to do? I have this crystal mold. We, and I've, as you can see, it looks pretty messy, doesn't it? I have put Let's Resin Light Purple Glitter Powder in it. So very carefully, we're going to use some of the Magic Resin in here and cure it up and, and see how we can, how it comes out at the end of the day. I have the Translucent Red Dye by Illumilite and Let's Resin Emerald Green Dye. I want to see about mixing this in. I was very careful. I know that UV Resin does not like alcohol ink, so I was pulled out dyes, not inks. The Let's Resin Chrome Marker. Now, I did do some stuff while you weren't around because I wanted to try to save some time. That's not the one we want to look at yet. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of these mini ornaments. I've already used the chrome markers on them. This has been sitting for about a day and we'll put the UV resin in, cure it up and see what happens there. You know, it should pull it up. We have a couple of just plain ordinary molds. We'll do, you know, maybe a couple clear, just straight clear. We'll do it in layers to see how it, you know, how it cures up using the Magic Resin curing lamp. I thought it would be interesting, right, to mix these colors in a bit of it and then see how it cures up. Uh, I thought this would be a cool little mold. It's so funny when you have so many molds. I was like, so what do I want to use for this experiment? We'll use this one. And these, this mold, if I'm not mistaken, goes along with a ring, like a ring mold that I got, and these can sit on the top of it. But you could always do earrings and whatnot with these as well. Uh, and I wondered about making like two and then gluing them together. But that's, that's another video. That's another thought. I'll let that go. The last piece I have, and I know, I know, before you even say it, this is not a clear mold. I get that. But I still want to see the potential of being able to cure the UV resin. We'll do thin layers, obviously. We will layer it up. My, so, you'll laugh at this. I used uh, this brush, and it hadn't been completely cleaned out. So what you're seeing in here that's the darker color is from the reindeer that I did on my sleigh. It, it started pulling itself out, but I also used the Interference Pink from Let's Resin. Uh, just dusted that on. This mold I got from Timu, and it's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. I went back online and went, oh, okay, makes sense why that's so small now. So now that we have that sort of figured out, Let's get some of this. I think what we'll do too is we might as well mix some of the glitter powder and the interference pink into one of my little mixing jugs and we will, you know, see how it sets up, right? Because I know people are going to want to know how is this going to measure up? Is this something that I want to buy? So I'm going to wear my pink gloves today. If they get my hands get too hot, then we'll just switch things out. I hope everyone's, uh, I probably said this in the first part of my video. I hope you're having a great day. 
of course, it's a different day for me right now. It'll be the same day for you. I did take this upstairs and warm it up. It's, it's a little chilly, so we'll have to be... You can see I have not opened it. I have not done anything with this. And the same with the resin. Oops. Same with the tape. Where are you now? Have not opened this yet. I just wanted you to be aware. I know there's some things that I do that it's like, well, I tested this out before. This has not been tested at all. Yeah, so let's uh, put that in my garbage. Get that out of there. All right, now I want to look at this. This said it was low order. I don't necessarily recommend this, but yeah, doesn't. It, I mean, I think any of this stuff is going to have a bit of an odor to it. Not bad. Again, don't recommend it. It's just I did, just to sort of test out the theory. If you're going to say it's low order, then I want to know. I need to plug in my camcorder so I don't lose you at any point. I am going to plug in my lamp. This may be a bit longer video than normal, but it's a good tester and why not? All right, so I might, I'm going to have to let you go for some things uh, because of, I need to go get my yellow UV resin for my house, but let's get some stuff going. Let's see what we can do. And let's start with this one. Since we have it here, let's open up the lamp. I want to get my other glasses. I really hope they're close by. Uh, okay. I am going to put you on a brief pause. I need to go get my other l glasses and we will also get the UV resin so I have it handy. Be right back. We're ready to carry on. So let me put that there. I'm going to switch my glasses out, I think. And we'll pour some of this in. Again, I've been bad in the past for making too thick of a layer. They say you're supposed to do this in thin layers. And this piece, I admit, may take a little bit of UV resin. But let's see what we can do. And I'm probably thinking with some of these, it'd be a really good idea to let it sit and work its way into the little grooves because there's all kinds of little groovies on this thing. I, yeah, I don't have a picture. They did so, you know, it's so cool on Timu. They give you such pretty looking pictures of how the end result's supposed to be. And uh, yeah, online it looks really cool and it, it gave me sort of inspiration to you know, give it a whirl myself, but for time constraints and whatnot. So we'll just, we'll do this just with this interference on it. And in a future video, I might, you know, have it all decorated up and, but it'd be so much, it, this would be nicer if it were bigger, because it'd certainly make it a lot easier to uh, color in. That's for sure. So I'm just going to help the, the resin get where I want it to go. You know, say I had something in that. A hair or something. I've always been very fortunate. I appreciate that. I always seem to find the, you know, the stuff that gets into the resin, whether it's something in the mold or one of my hairs ac accidentally off my head falls in. do is I'm going to tilt this a little bit. Let's see if we can get this to sort of slide into places. Sometimes it's just easier to do, to do this than to try and push it into place.
but I think I'm gonna have to push it into place or I'm gonna have to add some more to it. have to add some more for some of these lower place spots in it where it's dipping. So talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. <laughs> A little bit of humor. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna get some of this some more around the edges, especially. to see about getting into some of these little divots that are on the side. I'm going to probably use, need to use my uh, toothpick to do that. Where are they? Actually, maybe I'd be better off using this because it's... You'd have to, you know what, you'd have to do this if you're working with regular resin too to get it into some of these spots. And I might have to do some of this off camera as well because this is going to take me quite a bit of time. But we'll get a little bit done. We'll see how it hardens up and then we can, you know, if I have to go off and do some things, I'll do some things off camera and then we'll come back so we can see how some of this stuff worked out. But we all know once we take resin to that, to those off places, then any other we put in, and we know it'll run into those places. So that's what I'm doing here: is trying to just get it into all the all the nooks, so it kind of starts to wander over. And one thing I would recommend is if you're going to use a mold like this where you can't, you know, do the underside with something like the Let's Resin lamp, then when you take it out, take it out very carefully. Uh, use, I would wear gloves, obviously, and I would also, uh, yeah, try not to touch this I'll consider the top side so the underside you're not going to want to touch that pick it up by the sides so all right now I know I have a couple air bubbles but they may also be from so we'll just quickly go over this all right so I have a couple of spots where I can see I don't have I don't have any of this resin, so let's just do up the middle here. Alright. So I don't want to put any more in there. So blend that around a little bit. Alright. Okay. I'm going to move this. My little tool there, put that over the side. We are going to cure that. We will do, well now let me see, how long did it say we should do this? Two to three minutes for each side. Well, let's do it for 90 seconds and see what goes on there. While that's going on, I'm very carefully going to just put, and if I get one of these, this will work for me. 
Now, all I'm going to do in this one is I'm just going to pour some of this UV resin. I'm not going to add anything to it. We're just going to pour it in. And let it move about. And if I haven't mentioned it before, I'm going to mention it again or for the first time in this video. Do this in layers. Don't I've done it before where I've put way too much in and then it doesn't cure properly. So I, unless they've revamped that you can do it really thick. Now I know Daniel Cooper and his, he really fills his up and I've, you know, I think what we'll do, this is what we'll do. We'll do one where I do it in layers and then we'll do another one where I just fill it up and see what happens. see what happens. Okay. I'm trying to think where where can I put things? So let's let that sit up there. I'll fill one of these right up. Okay, so we did 90 seconds on that. Let's see. You hear that? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm only laughing because I have my mics. They're they're attached to my shirt, but okay. So that is hard. Just for sake of argument, as well as and I yeah I got a couple of bubbles in this. So let's get rid of those. Be really careful using a long nut lighter. Yeah, that's down there. Where is my, did it go away? Might have gone on its own. Okay, we'll put that back under. We'll put this under now. And we'll do another 90 seconds for that. We'll fill one of these up. Uh, I don't know if there's any specifically that are deep. Let's do this one. Just fill it right up to the top. These aren't very deep. These are very shallow. I'll spread out. Probably got that just right over there. Now I always put the cap back on my bottles uh, just so that they don't, because I do get some light in this room that I don't end up with my, the top of my tip getting sealed up because of the UV resin. Okay, so we'll put that down. That can go down there now. So it won't matter if it sees the UV light. Alrighty. So, curious, has anyone tried the Magic Resin UV? If you have, please comment below. I'd like to know what your thoughts have been on it. That's one of the things I will, I will always ask you if you've tried something because I'm curious to know you know, what other people have tried, whether they like things or not. And what you tell me about certain products or things you've tried, it actually helps me improve my videos for you and it helps other people as well. So please don't shy away from putting comments below on tips and tricks. Yes, that's hard. I don't know if that one will have... No. It did. It started setting up a little bit though, that little one right here. Okay, so let's put that off to the side. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to put that one there. You know what? I'm just going to take this off of here. If I need to bring it back, I will. All right, so let's do this. And I, I will cure from the other side as well, I, because there's more than sort of one amount going in here. I'll do the other side once I've got it filled. Okay, like that. Go there. I'm going to pull this in around. Put 
put a little bit more on that. Oh, and yeah, I have one more thing to tell you before I uh, before I carry on. Once I get this with enough UV resin in it. It's got an air bubble in it. And I know I've got some dust in that too. So one thing I do have, I'll come back to the other thing I was going to mention. Do any of you use a HEPA filter in your rooms? I know, I think it's Resineers now that has a HEPA filter out. So I just went online in general looking at HEPA filters. Is you know, sort of my local stores around here uh, versus buying something from like Resineers. But I just wondered if anyone's got a HEPA filter that they use uh, in their in their studio when they're working with uh, just in general, like just to keep the dust out of the air, to uh, take out any odors and and whatnot. So uh, if you do, I'd love to know what you're using and how you find it, because I keep thinking about getting myself one, and I just I just haven't gotten around to it. Alrighty, let's do this next. So we'll do this for ninety as well. And then once we've got these done, we'll flip them over and we'll do 90 on the other side. Okay, the other thing I was going to tell you about was the mat that came with the Magic Resin. So this is the size of it. It's not very big. And they may have done that because of the fact that they see you doing small pieces with this, not, not large pieces like this. But I have done UV resin in this before. Um, and it's turned out pretty cool. So it, it is doable, but it depends on how much resin you really want to use up. I'm trying to think. There's not really anything else I can do just yet. I need to sort of get this done and then we can move on. And maybe what I might do with this piece just to get us moving along is not fill up the whole thing, but just do a section of it um, if I can. Or we'll come back to this piece. Because I do want to get to the Let's Resin. And what I can do is do, do that off camera as well. Hopefully you can hear that. So let's flip them over now. Let's do the other side. And we'll do that for 90 seconds. I am going to pop those out then after the 90 seconds. And then what I'll do is we'll mix up a little bit of, I guess it doesn't really matter some of the UV resin and we'll mix it with these two. And I've always known you have to be careful with how much you put in because you still need the UV to cure. Unlike resin that will automatically cure because of the time lag, uh, we don't want too much, too much stuff in the UV resin because it, we want it to, you know, get all the way through. And I, think if we have too much glitter or something in it, it's not going to set up properly. This is when you kind of wish you could time speed, time warp through this. I don't know how to do that in my videos, so I apologize for that. Well, I'm not going to apologize. I just don't know how to do it. I'm learning not to apologize for absolutely everything that I don't know how to do. This should be done shortly and then we'll pop them out. There we go. Okay. So again, I'm going to be really careful. Now, 
now crystal clear which well I gotta put my other glasses on I can't tell you if that's crystal clear without my other glasses on so I'm very carefully going to put it just on the edge of this and let's see how I mean I look at it it's like anything you have to really watch your air bubbles I think I, I either have air bubbles or I have a bit of dust in that but it looks pretty cool so we'll put that very carefully back on here. Let's get the other one out. Now I'm almost thinking I might have been better off doing this all as one in one go versus layering it like I did. Let go, let go. Okay. So I do have some air bubbles in that. It's a little sticky right now. So let's just throw that one back under. Let go, let go, let go. So you're going to be, be very careful taking these out. So let's just put these two back there. And I do have, so again, this is one reason I think sometimes pouring it, I want to do it all at once, but understandably that is there's a bit of a design and it would have been between the two layers. And I'm not sure you can see it. It almost looks like a ghost, just the shape of it right in here. And maybe if I put it down my black paper, let me do this again for 90 seconds and then I'll put it on the black piece and see if you can see it. Wondering if that's part of the reason why when Daniel does it, he does, he's got a much more powerful cure than UV light than I do. Maybe at some point I'll look into getting the lamp that he's got. But I have found that before with other resins that it it may almost be better to do it all in one layer, but I just don't know if the resins have been, you know, tested well enough to be at the point where you can pour it whatever thickness you want. That I'm not sure of. But I'm sure they've they've come in leaps and bounds from when they first brought this stuff out. So I kind of want to see if it's less sticky. So that's why I say be very careful when you take those out. Don't get your fingers on them and probably better off to have, have gloves on anyway. And then if you have a nice bright sunny day, I recommend putting stuff out in the sun because the sun will do an amazing job of setting UV resin. I almost want to have a clock ticking down on this. All right, let's have a look at this. And I'm going to cover, oh, no, that's not where, give me a second. I just need to, I'm going to cover up my little house over here. I, I will do that in layers off camera and then show it to you. Oops. I think this is going to need a little bit. It still feels a little... The back doesn't feel tacky and I can run my finger over top of that, but I think I would do it longer. They did say two to three minutes each side and we have not done it that length of time. I will, again, I'll put this off to the side. I will cure these some more and then we'll have check them out at the end. So let's do this piece, one of these, we'll only do one. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop off camera. I'm going to do some more. I'll, you know, throw my, uh, well, you know what? We should really do that on camera. Never mind. As much as I was going to say. So let's do this differently. I'll do these off camera. So I'm just going to put those off to the side. We are going to mix up some of our UV resin so that you can see what I'm doing. I don't, I don't want to do that off camera. I don't think that's fair to you to have me do it off camera. So let's just do this on camera. Let's do this on camera and let's get one of these little, I don't know how much glitter is going to stick to that. It's a, I know it's silicone, but yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I won't be using these again. Well, as far as putting this in, I mean, this is, I, I got to be able to get that off of there. That's too funny. Glitter everywhere, right? All right, let's put that there. I don't want that. <laughs> so I haven't put a whole lot in here. And I think, and sometimes I think it's a matter of testing the waters to see how much you can you can put into something like this. It's pretty. So we'll get that into, we'll put that into one of these small little ones. sure I have let's do this one I don't think I have enough in there you know that I'm gonna have to I guess it doesn't matter if I don't have enough in it I think I'll put some more of the interference in this So again, yeah, you're going to have to figure out what's going to work best. I don't have um, the perfect, you know, measurements on any of this. I just think you got to make sure that you can, you can still somewhat see through it or that the lamp's going to be strong enough to go through it. And I think that's where a lamp like let's resins is helpful because it's doing it from the top and the bottom versus a lamp that's just for just doing the top i know you can flip it over i get that but i wonder if having it from top and bottom at the same time is more beneficial but i don't i don't know for sure all right let's get that in there i'm going to pop some of the bubbles on it first before i pour it be very careful if you're doing this, please. And I want this one. So the American Thanksgiving is coming up very quickly. For any of you in the States, have you got plans for that weekend i've already seen there's some black friday sales going on already it's so funny to me i mean black friday way way back and i'm dating myself i get that used to be you know one day or you know just the one weekend around the american thanksgiving and now it is <sighs> it starts much earlier and it it's, it reminds me too of the boxing day sales that start at the beginning of december it's like, okay, Boxing Day still weighs off people. And I haven't really ever gotten in the hype of it. I know when I worked in the corporate world, I had friends that would go down to the States, co-workers that would go down to the States and, you know, go do their shopping down there because it was, the deals were better, even with the exchange rate for us here in Canada, which is beyond now. Like, it's just... And a lot of people don't get why it's it's expensive for Canadians to shop in the States for some things. It's really got to be a really good deal for me to jump on the bandwagon. But anyway, uh, I'm just, you know, 
wondering if anyone's got any plans and if um, do you do your like the Black Friday shopping? that sit for a moment okay let's see what this does we'll do this for 90 seconds like we have the other ones and I will wipe this out and then we will get some made up of the dyes obviously not going to put those two colors together red and green do not mix them not together anyway so you'll get brown <laughs> Been there, done that once before. Okay. Now, I'm just going to block that light a little bit. This is a lot. We'll probably just do one, one color. We'll do the, the let's resin the green in this one. Hopefully everything, hopefully I've got everything in camera. I'll really be disappointed if I've missed something for you. I'll apologize right now. If, for that, I will definitely apologize for. Because you want to be able to see, right? Okay, so let's mix this up. And I'm trying to think, I do, you know, it's funny, I should have brought out, because I do have some of the, the Magic Resin dyes, and here I'm using other brands, I'm just realizing that now. I'm trying to get this all mixed in. I have to maybe try one of the Magic Resin colors in there, UV Resin, see if it makes a difference. I mean, this is blending. Still got some streaks in it though. Okay. All right, let's put that down. Makes pretty good. Not completely, not as nice as I'd like it to, but not bad. All right, let's check this out. Okay, that's hardened up after 90 seconds. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, we'll put it in like that. We'll put this over here in this one. Yeah, now we'll do it. So we've done that one full. Well, pretty much full. It's not completely full. It's got a little bit more of a lip it can go over. I think I've got a little bit too much of this. So what I might do is, do I, really, do I have a lip? No, maybe I don't. Hard to tell. I think I'm going to put the rest of the green on this one just because I have it and I can. And I think that's left over left over after this we'll just I'll get rid of it what I'm doing am I in camera I'm not in camera enough am I right. just 
Yes. I might have to go back down that way only because of the length of the cord on this. And I'm going to put it in sideways this time. So instead of putting it the other way, I'm putting it in sideways this time. And we'll do this for 90 seconds. Have a sip of my coffee. All right. The red I'll do off camera to save you having to watch that. I will get these pieces uh, wrapped up off camera because the real test is to how good the tape is, right? It's not whether or not Natalie can wrap tape around a uh, ornament as such. And if I run into any issues or whatnot, I will share that with you uh, when I get back. I will also tape up my Christmas tree house so you can see uh, and we'll talk about that too yeah I just I know this video is starting I feel like it's going to be a bit longer than I want it to be so I just figure well if I can get some stuff done safely off camera that doesn't really impact whether or not um, you know the overall of what I'm doing then I'll do that and then bring you back And this blue mat I'm going to be using for my in my card room. I know that sounds really odd, doesn't it? A card room, a resin room. Yeah, I'm really spread out way too much in this house. And trust me when I say I would rather be all in one room. All right, let's have a look, see here. So I'm noticing, and I've noticed this before, so again, I'm not putting this down to the UV resin. It's, you know, I've, it's almost like it gets wavy, and I don't know whether that's because the resin underneath is hardened, and so now you're putting something on top of it. I don't know the reasoning for that. Okay. Yeah, I think this one needs a bit more. So I'm going to do that off camera. I'll flip them over, and we'll take, and I'll probably take those out together with you. So I just want to cover that up. All right. I'm going to let you just sort of whatever for a few moments. I'm going to do some more things. I'll bring you back and we'll carry on with the tape and doing some stuff with it. See you shortly. Well, what I've been doing has taken me a little bit of time. Finally back to carry on with our experiments, our playing, if you will. I have applied some of the Let's Resin tape to the house. I was very st strategic. So something I'm going to point out to you that you may want to keep in mind when you're working with tape like that is to do your best that wherever the resin's going to go, not to get your fingerprints on the tape. Now, I think I might have in one spot here gotten my fingerprints. And we know that like resin will pick up anything and as well silicone. So I would be, my recommendation is to be very careful when you're working with the tape that you don't get your fingerprints on the sticky side. The other little tip and trick, and I don't know if I've shared this with you before, is I hate finding the ends roll of tape of any kind, especially clear. So I always, when I'm done working with it, I will fold a part of the end down. Normally I do it better than what I've done on this, but I have folded it so I will easily uh, moving forward find this. So I just wanted to point that out. I did cut this out of it just for ease of working with it. I am going to use the Let's Resin Yellow in here and then we'll see just if the tape leaves any kind of marks. I'm going to use the yellow in here for this. Now, this piece is not flat, so I had a, I was challenged trying to get this flat. I've done it to the best of my ability, but I can see there being a warp in that when we're done. And I'm going to put red in here for this bow. Now, the other thing we talked about was using this around pieces. 
do not use this if you're doing something as thin as these. I did not wrap this up. I have no intentions doing that because, well, we're dealing with uh, two inches versus, uh, now maybe if I cut it a different way, but like seriously, you can see, don't do this. <laughs> save yourself, save yourself the hassle. Just don't do it. Use something that's thinner. Um, yeah, you don't want to do that. Uh, for the sake of this one, we will do it and see how it how it uh, works as far as keeping the resin where it's supposed to be. I actually didn't cut this big enough, so I had to improvise and then cut a small piece just to act as the the doming on this. Well, so we'll see how it works, right? That's the name of the game is to see how it works. I have worked on some other things with my other pieces and I'll show you that momentarily. Let's work on this. So as I say, I was really, I did a really as best a job as I could because I want this as flush as possible to these windows. Okay, I recommend that. If you don't, you run the risk of it seeping out from underneath. I will let you know that when it came to curing some of my other pieces, I did use my Let's Resin uh, two-sided UV lamp. I think this lamp will be fine if you're doing very simple things that don't require a lot of heat getting. I don't want to say heat. Let me rephrase it. Like if the light doesn't matter whether it goes both sides at the same time, I think this will be fine. Um, it'll work for simple things. I just I like the idea of the light coming from both directions all at once. I think it's better. Now, what I might do is bring this out. Yeah, I, I, I concern myself that it might. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to be better. Can you see? Yes, you can. You're in the frame. Perfect. Let me get this set aside for right now. And hopefully, I have enough of this stuff. Um, yeah, hopefully. I could always pull out the... I should have laid this on its side too. Let me do that with the red while I'm thinking about that. Because I'm going to have air bubbles in this, so I'm going to have to get down in there with the... really wish these these did not have the air bubbles like they do. I'm going to jump over the other side just in case. <laughs> Try and keep it uniform for all that matters. I don't want I don't want this really thick. I, I'm definitely not going to the depth of what these windows are. I have no interest in doing it that much. I just really it's the test of the tape right whether or not it peels away easily whether or not we end up with residue on it I'll have to take my gloves off for that uh, temperature wise you know what can it handle what can't it handle and I mean that's kind of hard to do uh, being that I'm doing it in this that whether or not it's going to be. Oh, I hate these bubbles. Right, because we're not applying the heat to the other side, obviously. It's just to this side, so. Yeah. I guess we're going to get a good indication because I really, I'm going to have to use my, my heat, my my lighter in this. I've got way too many air bubbles in this stuff. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah. I would not have expected it to have that many air bubbles in it. Not at all. And again, I don't know whether that's got anything to do with the temperature in this room or not. I did have my heater going while I was working on my own. So all I'm going to do now is pull this to the sides, like 
so it goes all the way around it and then we will and it's climbed the sides I don't like when resin does that when it climbs the sides <laughs> Yeah, so I worked pretty diligently on, I played with a couple other things while I was, uh, you know, working away. I did get out some of the Magic Resin dye to use in with the Magic Resin UV. I think some UV resins really aren't meant for the dyes, perhaps, to be used in them. I do like the fact that there are companies now that are coming out with it already colored. I think that is very helpful because they will know what needs to be done to ensure that you know the resin is going to cure properly that it's all really well mixed in there and the one piece I did it was one thing that was neat about the coloring I put in it was that it kind of created a design in it so from that perspective I'll leave those air bubbles there you know it's I'm cool with it but I think having it already pre-mixed, no, I don't know whether, what I'm running into over there. But yeah, it. I mean, the dyes mixed into the UV resin, okay. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna say on that. I'm getting all kinds of UV resin. <laughs> around the sides of this. This is incredible. Maybe that's okay though. And I'm just using a toothpick here. Because I'm not too concerned about... I mean scratching the tape's not going to make any difference I don't think to the grand scheme of things. Okay. All right. All right. Now I know I have some air bubbles in there. I know some of them are sort of toward the bottom. Okay. Did I get that one go away? Go. I don't know whether I got the air bubble or what. Trying to see where I might have some others. Now you'll notice I'm just dabbing it inside of there. I'm not holding it down because I just I don't want to burn the resin either. Right, the the sides of this. So let me just bring this down. See if I can see. See what I can see, not if I can see what I can see. All right, we're gonna turn this around now. So I can do up at the top here. Oh, this is too funny. Yeah, this is this is definitely going to have a a wow in it because of the it must not have been it couldn't have been flat on the other side because I took it off the tape I I took it off a couple of times and tried to smooth it down from different directions and I just I couldn't so I just it's yeah it's just one of those spots that's not. Lending itself to being smooth. And we got some air bubbles in there. So again, I don't know how we really check the temperature on this to see whether it, like how heat resistant it is. I don't know how to test that. And I definitely, I mean, I'm not going to just apply heat to the other, 
to the tape just to see uh, because that's dangerous and I don't think it's a good idea. So I'm not really sure what, you know, I guess as long as it's got some heat resistance to it, then if you got like had a spot that you hadn't actually gotten the resin into, then it shouldn't uh, bubble up or anything, but I don't know. I don't know how to test that. So if you have any suggestions on that, yep, comment below. Oh, I hate air bubbles. Anyway, I guess as long as I continue to talk about how much I dislike the air bubbles, I'm going to get them, aren't I? that settled down in there I think down in that corner I'm gonna have an air bubble yep I can see it so I think I'm gonna have to figure out and use maybe my stick to get rid of that one because uh, getting you know my lighter down there is not going to be easy so let's just look at that I don't really see any Yeah, I am making a liar out of myself. There's a whole bunch of tiny little ones right here in this. And again, they possibly could be, yeah, popping up because of it not being flat, flat down. All right, so let me see. I think, oh, I've got a spot I've missed here on this one, so we're going to have to throw some more yellow in here. Let's put a, bit, a little bit more in these. I don't know how much I've got in any of these windows. You want enough, right? But I again, I don't want to fill it up. And I think for these, what we'll do is we'll start these at the 30 second range. Is it 30 or it's 60 seconds, isn't it? I think it's 60 seconds. And then we'll go from there. And we'll flip it and we'll do it on both sides. I'd like to think this tape will hold up to that. I mean, we'll, we'll give it a go anyway. And, and see. Crazy air bubbles. Wow, people. Wow, 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 wow. Get rid of it that way. <laughs> yeah, I think depending too on the size of your, you know, what you're trying to get the air bubbles out, that'll dictate whether or not you use, a, use your lighter or not. And I guess where we'll find the real test is when we're doing uh, this piece here. I will turn this back around so I can have a look because I can only see from one direction here. All righty. Now I do have a bubble at the bottom of this one. I think I just got rid of it. All right, let's put this under the the light, and we'll just use the magic resin lamp. We'll do it for 60 seconds. Oh, of course. Now, see, I'm wondering if part of the reason I'm getting some of these air bubbles is because of, 
I, like I did my best, like I said, to get the tape as down as best I could. So I don't know if there's any air bubbles leaking in underneath somehow. So, oops, don't be putting that in there. Right. So we'll just put that in for 60 seconds. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it over without. And I think I've mentioned before that sometimes I put over top of my lamp, like a towel or something. Just, I tend to think that it, you know, keeps more of the light in. Am I right? I don't know. But it, it's one of those things that I do it because it makes me feel better and I think it works. 60 seconds. And we'll, we'll move this around because I want to make sure, and we'll test too before I flip it over because we want to make sure none of the resin is going to come running out. Yeah, this is going to be interesting, that piece, I think. Uh, la, da, 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 da. Let's do this. So we'll just test this out. Yeah, it's, it's set, but it's not completely set. I, when I hit my dotting tool down into it, it, it did leave some marks behind, so it's not quite set but it would be set enough that we could flip it over. Oh, and I've got an air bubble in that one. Yay. <laughs> Gotta love when you get air bubbles. One of the pieces I've done that I'm gonna show you has right around the edge of it, it's got a nice big air bubble. So maybe what I'll do is see if with my X-Acto knife I can get rid of this without Nope. Air bubbles stuck in place very well. Okay. Let's see if everything's gone. I don't know about these guys up at the top here. And the other pointer is when I test this, I tend to do the corners. So if I do mark it, you're not going to see it. seems to be set. Well, it's not going to run anywhere. That's more the point. So let's flip this over and do it from the other side. I was trying, I'm trying to think, I don't think that's going to fit under my uh, Let's Resin lamp. It, mi it might this way into it, but I don't know. It may, it may not work. Okay, so while that's going on, I want to take, I have a, I'm going to have to take my gloves off for a moment, or at least one of them. If you've ever tried using tape with having rubber gloves on, yeah, you know what happens. It just sticks, 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 sticks. Okay, now... There we go. All I want to do with this piece is see if I can. Can you see that there? Okay. All I want to know. Is how well that's going to stick there. See, like I said, in the video they did online, they gave me the impression that you could use this as a stop, if you will, for the UV. I wouldn't trust that, you know? Here, let me just put that down. I just don't trust that that's gonna be sufficient to... hold the resin. And I, I really wish I had 
Okay, now I remember how they did it. Okay, it wasn't like that. It was actually, and of course I don't have a square mold, so I'm not doing this as well as I could. They had done it like this. Now that I'm thinking about it. They had done it like this, and then had set it like this. So I, again, I don't have a proper square box to do this, but they had put the tape on like this, and then they filled the inside with resin, let it sit up, and then they took this off. I'm not 100% sure I would trust that. I would be, I would be careful. If you decide to do that, I would test something small first to make sure it's going to work. Because I, yeah, I'm not sure that, I don't know. Now, I, I do not know if they had it, you know, bent underneath as well onto the silicone. I don't know, but I would be cautious doing something like that. I just, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's stuck on there. I won't deny that, but I just don't know if it would be like the pressure from the resin. I'd be, I'd be careful if you were going to do that. I'd be careful. So I'm just going to put that away. I'm going to get rid of that piece of tape. Get rid of this because I don't need it anymore. And that was, I think I mentioned at the beginning, but that roll of tape is 105 feet. And I do have air bubbles in this. Right at, right at the corner on one of these squares. All right. So let's take this off. I'm always really um, careful taking this off. I don't know if I need to be. Oh, I got air bubbles. I have air bubbles. Okay, that didn't completely set right there. Get rid of that. So I'm just going to run my finger. I'm not going to put it on there because it is damp there. Okay. There's no, it's not, I mean, my finger's not sticking to it. So that's nice. I can do it part. So I'm going to do the far side here. Okay. No, not sticky. That's nice. We'll check for residue in a minute. Hard to tell. It almost look I I would almost say I can see some on here, but again, I don't know if it's my eyes or, or that. Or the tape. Let's do this one. Okay, you can see you can see right so we did up here you could see that like my fingers are just going over like I mean it that is not sticky so I like I like that I don't want to put my fingerprints on my fingerprints well literally my fingerprints on the other side so here's what we've got I do have air bubbles I have air bubbles there uh, I have some air bubbles in here I'll have to um, put that back under the lamp. Now, the other thing that I like is that it has not seeped out. So that's that's great. Well, it might have been a little bit there. Again, I think, you know, I, I don't want to put this down to the tape. I want to put this down to the fact that this is not completely flat. It wasn't when I made it. Using the polyurethane may not have been the best bet because it didn't have time to really, like, smooth itself out. I think my biggest thing with the tape is that it's not sticky because I've had that before where it's been sticky. So I like that it's not sticky for sure, for sure, for sure. I like the fact that it's too, I mean, that's going to be really helpful to you, but I think it looks nice. I do like it. 
Now I'm trying to see. Now this, of course, the top isn't a really good indicator, but I think I'm okay up there. I think it's an optical illusion with how thick it looks. Yeah, I think that's an optical illusion. Okay, so that's how that looks. Yeah, see, I could cover up one of the, an entire tree and do it. So there's a, you know, you'd use, I think, less tape just because it's as thick as it is. And the other thing I like that with it being as thick as it is, I could do both sets of panes without having to worry about uh, lines potentially being in it. So I think that's another bonus when you have wide areas like this. Or even if you did this, you could, you know, put it the other way. I think there's a big benefit to it being two inches wide for sure. So let's throw that off to the side now that we've uh, played with that. And I'll finish with the... I don't want that on there. Finish with that. So let's see how well I did taping that up. And let's pour some of the magic resin in there. And then I will gather up the other things. I'll show you what I have to show you. And that will be the end of this rather long video. So I did go around there a little bit extra to make sure that it was, you know, up around the sides. We will be able to do, see what kind of resistance to the tape this is because it's, you know, the tape's sort of in the forefront. Again, don't use this wide of a tape for what I'm doing here. I did try not valiantly, but to find a piece that I could, uh, you know, put around it, but this isn't necessarily the best piece in the world that I could have chosen. Okay, so let's take that and move this around because I definitely do not have this all to the sides. Yeah, and I want to be very careful that I don't push the tape in because I don't want the resin attach attach. Oh, you know what? And I have a hole in this silly thing. Um, oh, too funny. So I have to make sure I go around the the hole and don't throw resin down into that. If nothing else, this video gives you a little bit to laugh at. And what not to do. That's what I love. What not to do. Or what to be, you know, be safe about. Or just to have a good laugh at my expense. Whatever works for you. See, it's going up onto the tape now, but that's okay. And I would be tempted to, to let this sit, to let it sort of level itself out. I've had, I've seen a number of videos where people said, you know, let it sit for a couple of minutes before you, you decide to throw the heat or not the heat, not the heat, throw the light on it. I gotta stop saying heat because I'm not putting heat on it as such. And two, with what is on this piece, it needs to release its air bubbles. So I'm going to very carefully go up around the hole. And I know you probably can't really see what I'm doing here. OK. 
Okay. Now I pro I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more of the resin in here. Because I want to, I, part of what this test is really is to make sure it doesn't leak out. Right, that it's clinging to the resin well. And I, I, the other thing you'd want to make sure of too, if you're, when you're wrapping something up like this, is that you get it level, either right level to the bottom, or it's up a little bit, versus you having a, like it sounds like I've got, like, you hear that? I almost think I got a piece of tape that's not level, if, if you will. So you want to make sure, again, it's personal preference, to have it level so that your piece ends up level. So either have it right lined up with the bottom or I gotta remember that holes there or just a little bit above the bottom so that your piece is flat flat on the on your table whatever it is you're working on. So that's the recommendation I have. Because I know I've got, I obviously have a piece of tape that's not, that's too low. All right. So I'm going to put my, I think I have enough covering that. I think it's, yeah, I think it'll be covering that enough. All right, so let's take our, very carefully, I have this, oh, I have no setting on this. So some of these lighters have a gauge. This one doesn't. So if you don't have a gauge on it, again, be very careful, okay? So we're just going to very carefully take this in there. Not very long. Okay, I just, I'm kind of getting a... Is the tape going to melt? Okay, so let's put this under the light. Hopefully that is, yep, it's going to be high enough. Let's just do this for 60 seconds and see how we do. Put the lid back on this because we're done with that now. I don't think I'm going to do any more on camera. Let me just roll back and grab some of my other pieces that we've done so we can discuss them. And then I'm done. And then I'm done. So I hope you've stayed to the end and appreciated, you know, sort of some of the tips and tricks and that we've been able to cover off two products in one. I could have, you know, it might have been easier if I'd done two videos, but they kind of went together. So that's why I decided to work them in together. And we'll just talk about a couple of little things to give you some of what I would not recommend doing from a UV resin perspective. And I guess what I can do is I can take my gloves off, can't I? Well, that's setting up. It's actually been a cool enough day that my hands have not sweated in the pink gloves, which is sweet. Thank you for your patience as I do that. All right, let's take that off. Okay, so that's warm. <laughs> it's not hot, hot. So it's it's just, it's warm from that. Okay, I don't, let, let me test this before I all of a sudden start. Okay, that's set, good, good. As I flip it over and, you know. So here we go. We're going to see if we have any that's come down the sides of this or if it's sealed up I would I'll show you once this is off so let's take this off and then we'll go through everything and then I'll let you go I feel like this has been too long of a video but that's okay let's get this off stick that over there
I'm in camera, right? <laughs> All right. That over there. So I don't know if you can see, but this definitely isn't level. It ran up the side of the tape. We would have to either dome that more or I'm going to have to, you know, get this properly set and then use my deburring tool to get rid of that. Would I use this for some piece like this? No, I don't think I would. For me, the easier thing is just to pour the UV resin on, get it out to the edges, cure it and be done with it. I guess it depends on what you're doing is if you would use the tape as what do you call it? One, like a trough kind of idea on it. I'm just wanting to have sort of a look to see whether or not any of it's gone down the sides. It doesn't look like it has, from what I can tell, it doesn't look like it got, th like went down alongside of the tape. The only problem is it went up the side of the tape. But I've had that with molds too where it does that. Okay. So, and then for smoothness, yeah. This does, I would definitely put this on under longer, but it's got a nice smoothness to it. So overall with the, the UV resin, the, the magic resin, to me it is similar to the J Diction or the Let's Resin. I think they've come a much further, they've come much further further along with the UV resins than I would say even two years ago, right? They're getting better at creating them. So they work better in the long run. As far as coloring UV resin, like clear UV resin, not a big fan of doing that because I don't think with some of the, especially with the pigments, which you'll kind of see in a minute, I, d I don't know if they're really meant for them. So yes, I've used them, but not a lot more for me. The UV resin is meant as a clear top coat. That's what I use it for. So we're just going to put that aside because we don't need to deal with that anymore. Okay. This translucent by Illumilite. Don't, I don't recommend it. I think it's too heavy of a pigment. I've said in my other videos, it's a very pigmented dye. I'd be really, I would use something that's, lighter. I think these are probably better because they're not as thick. They're not as pigmented as what that is. Um, from like, even from a movement perspective, and I don't know how well you can see the red, this stuff is thick. Like, yeah, it flows pretty good, but it's very thick, right? Sticks to the bottle. So I would be wary of what in any UV resin, what type of pigment you use. All right. My crystal clear pieces. Now, as I mentioned, there was a marking in this, this one again, I don't know. We're going to be able to see it on the block. I don't know. I don't think you're going to, you, you can see it. If you were, if you hear, you could see it. Um, I don't know how well it's showing up for you on camera. I did uh, do a full cure under my Let's Resin again, and it's smooth, like it's not sticky. How long did I do this for? This was probably done for four minutes total in that, that lamp. Okay, so my finger isn't sticking to it. It's smooth. And as far as it being crystal clear, it's pretty decent. Yes, I had some air bubbles in it, and I know I had some dust in it. And then there you have these little pieces that have the fa facets on it, which I think hide more things, but it's, it is pretty. So from a, from a clear perspective, yes, I do like it. Let's go with this one. So I've had this happen with other UV resins. This is not specific to the magic resin, but I get, I get markings in it when it cures. Uh, it almost like, looks like a swirl in this one. I don't know if you can see it there or not, but I do get that with other UV resins and I don't know why that is. I said I wouldn't take these out. I did not. Again, I'm going to touch just the sides so I can put this back under. So I'm not going to touch this to see if it's, if it's dried or not. 
But with this, so I use the Let's Resin on that one, and it's not bad. It's not bad, aside from that swirly in it. And I don't, I don't know what to do, how to prevent that. So if you have ideas, please comment below. Okay, the one that went sort of sideways for me a little bit was the one that I used this in. Now, I will tell you that I mixed up my UV resin, put in some of the dye, poured it in, and then I put some just clear into the center of this. And this definitely had a, what would you call it? it I would almost want to say it was a bubble that was created within it as a result because it's it's popped up in the center. But let's take this guy out. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can, you can sort of see the clear in this a little bit, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, uh, not sure I'd recommend doing that. I maybe should have mixed it in a little bit. I just wanted to see kind of what would happen. But it, when it set, it created a ridge in the back. There's a bump on the bottom of that. So I'm going to throw that under the UV lamp because that's not set. I know it's not. And I want it to get direct light. I mean, so, uh, yeah, it's not going to be a fair comparison. This beautiful, beautiful coloring. Absolutely. Like, let me bring that one back up. Like, beautiful coloring on that. Like, nice, deep, beautiful red. I'd be more apt to use that with two-part epoxy. Okay, and then this is the one that had the glitter and the ear. Let me get red right interference pink in it. And that turned out pretty. That turned out pretty. Again, it'll go under the light just to get it set, set. All right. This guy. So this is where I'm talking about getting a bit of a design. Did I put you? Oh, okay. The Magic Resin Purple Dye in this one. I think I mentioned I got this mold from Timu. Not the greatest mold in the world, but it is pretty. So here's how these turn out. It is really pretty. And I think if you had this hanging um, from, from some spot where it could get light reflecting off of it, it'd be really pretty. I really, I have to admit, not the best mold in the world, but it does create beautiful pieces. And I know I have air bubbles in that, but it doesn't matter on a piece like this because you can't really see them. Okay, on the back, now I don't know if you'll, you're going to be able to see what I mean by the design. Nope, not on that. Definitely not on that. Uh, I don't know if you can sort of see the swirling that's going on inside of that. Maybe not. Anyways, uh, it did have some swirling happening in it, which made, made it kind of cool. But there we have that. When I got these, I got five of them, five of them, and I'm wanting to, I don't know whether I got five all together in the package, can't remember, it's too long ago. Okay. Gonna have fun cleaning that up. <laughs> all right, the last two. And again, I will be putting these under my Let's Resin UV lamp. Can you see this? No, get your hands out of the way, Natalie. Can you see the swirl in that now? Did that work, putting it like that? So the test with this was, was it going to pick up my chrome markers? And yes, it did. I didn't do the greatest job with it, but yes, it did. And that has to go back under the lamp because I have what looks like some wet spots in there. This one is has a nice big air bubble in it. Okay, 
there is still a little bit of the chrome in there, so I'm going to have to clean this, this mold up a little bit. Ah, my nose. Okay, this one I think shows up a little bit better with the, the chrome marker than that one did. Right. And the red that I used in this was the magic resin. Obviously, I mean, you can tell the difference. Uh, from a depth now, as I said, uh, and you can't see what I'm pointing to, so good on me. Let's just move these out of the way. Definitely, I mean, it's pigmented way more, so that's why it's as bright as it is. Anyway, I feel like I have talked your ears off, but I think it gives you a really good idea of, you know, if you're in Canada and want to try the Magic Resin out, to give you know a comparison against if you use Let's Resin and J Diction, I think it's a good UV resin. I think it's got a good price point on it. I like the idea that if you're starting out using UV resin, you can get the kit. So I think that's really great. I'll be using it for more of my projects. Again, not sure about throwing, you know, dyes into it, but I mean, the the glitter and the interference like a mica powder and I think would be fine just don't overdo it that one up there that's a be beautiful color but use it in two part epoxy and then the let's resin tape so there was no no stickiness to it it does a much wider uh, section which is great make sure your piece is flat if it not I mean you could you know it could trap some air bubbles I get air bubbles and everything. I'm kind of giving up on, you know, being totally exact on that. Uh, what else? Temperature wise, yeah, I don't really know what it would allow from that perspective. For me, two biggest bonuses with this are it's not leaving residue behind and it covers a bigger space. That's all I've got for you. I'm going to stop talking. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this video helpful. Comment below. And I will see you with my next shorter video. See you then. Bye for now.